Good morning. We are discussing on bonds in brickwork. The basic bonds we have seen yesterday are structure bond and header bond. Combining the structure bond and header bond in a particular fashion results in two types of very versatile brick masonry, brick bonds known as English bond and Flemish bond. In English bond, one course will be laid as structure. What first odd course? If odd course is structure, you start with structure courses usually. Structure, then the even course will be header. Then again structure, header. So in one course, complete structure. Second course, complete header. Third course again structure, <coughs> then header, repeating like that, using crosses, breaking the joints if needed. So English bond, minimum thickness of the wall for English bond need to be one brick wall because header is required. So one structure will give you only half brick. All structure courses will be laid with two bricks on structures. Only if you keep two bricks, it will be equal to one length of a brick. So if you want to accommodate the header on the top, the structure bond should have one brick wall. So structure bond, if you want to be a, a structure bond, which is structure yesterday, that point I missed, very sorry. If you keep only one brick in structure, it becomes half brick wall. Suppose you want to make this Structure bond also is a structural masonry or a structural bond. You can do it by using two bricks. If you keep two bricks, then breaking the joint using the half brick, you can construct a structural bond. So a structural bond universally is not a non-structural bond. Only if you use one brick in one course, then that structural bond is not a structural bond. Suppose you are using two bricks as structures, laying as structures, then breaking the joint by half bricks, again laying as structures with two bricks, then it becomes one brick wall thickness. When it is one brick wall thickness, it is a structural masonry. It can take structural loads. Usually structural masonry will be around 20 to 23 centimeter, including the pasta thick. So, conceptually, if we say structure bond is not a structural bond, is wrong. Structure bond, if it is laid with two bricks in one layer and go on doing it, it becomes a structural bond too. Uh, that, 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 that I should have clarified yesterday. Sorry, I missed. Now, you keep two structure, then over that you keep the header. Then structure header. That is called English bond. You have English bond for one and a brick thing. You have to give three structure. Then accordingly, one brick and uh, half brick like that. You can have one and a brick wall. You have two brick wall thick English bonds. And whenever you are making a corner L-shaped masonry like that, usually when you have two, you right angle corners, you have to uh, uh, correspondingly er er erect the masonry on both the directions. So whatever you have an odd course here will be an even course in the mutually perpendicular direction. You should, you should. The even course here will be the odd course there. That is the usual way of doing it. So one and a brick wall, two brick wall. Nowadays, two brick wall are, are obsolete because not many bricks are required and that much brick availability is less. Second, uh, if you are if you want to have two brick wall, it is better to go for framed structure, uh, non-load bearing walls with uh, load bearing frames or structures. Structural framework is preferred. In the case of Flemish bond, 
In the same course, you will have alternatively structure and header. Structure, one structure, then a header. One structure and a header. So the minimum header bond, uh, the premise bond also, you have one brick thick. One brick thick. So two structures will be kept, then one header. Then two structures, one header. So it occupies one brick length. So it is one. So one brick wall, one and a half brick wall, two brick wall, Flemish bond. In Flemish bond, in the same layer, you have alternatively structure and header. In the English bond, you have one layer full of structure, second layer full of header. So required breaking of the joint will be done by the process in both the cases. These are single Flemish bond. If you want double Flemish bond, one or two or three layers will be same way, then you repeat. Single Flemish bond, double Flemish bond, you have. So there, this uh, one structure, two header, one structure, two header, then like that if you proceed, it becomes double Flemish bond. Those are all different pattern of laying the brick masonry, erecting the brick masonry. Then you have miscellaneous bonds such as garden wall bond, garden wall bond, usually it will be used for compound walls, garden wall bond. Then herring bond bond, herring, H-E-R-R-I-N-G. B O R N A, herring bond, bond. Then you have zigzag bonds. Herring bond will also be inclined, skewed. It will not be orthogonal. Zigzag bonds. Then for cost effectiveness and functionality in appropriate technology, a, a type of bond known as rat trap bond. Rat trap bond. There you will have coarse cavity inside the wall. It will be a partial hollow brick masonry. Partial hollow brick masonry having staggered holes inside. First thing you can have savings in brick. Savings in brick. Second, since you have air in the cavities, the thermal comfort inside will be better. It, it will be a good insulator for heat. So the ambient temperature inside will be less. Only thing that the rat trap bond should be done with the skill and uh, the joints have to be filled properly and uh, possibility of dampness as you have core sections, vermite attack, termite attack. Termite attack or dampness creeping in capital due to capillarity, dampness on the lower layers possible. So you may have to plaster at least the lower part up to the window sill level. Usually rat trap bond will not be plastered, it will be pointed. Because to save material, if you start plastering, cement is very costly, sand is costly, labor is costly. So to a um, cost effective construction usually rely on pointing. So rat trap bond, even though it is pointing, at least it is better to plaster the lower areas where water will rise due to capillary. So these are in general the bond. Now we have to go for another material known as timber. Timber is not available. That is a post. Timber has, has been used very, very enormously, very bulk quantities in construction, especially in cold countries. Not that much in tropical countries. Timber is highly a resilient material, takes vibration. It is strong in compression and tension. That is the advantage of timber. Timber is strong in compression, it is strong in tension too. So it can be used 
as a compression member or a tension member. Usually a compression member is called a strut, S-T-R-U-T, strut. And a tension member is called a tie. Tension member is called a tie. A truss, a truss is made of struts and ties according to their nature of stress developed in the member, according to the loading and support condition. If you, you, if you see the old primary schools, which is uh, tiled roof, which is tiled roof, usually secondary schools, higher secondary schools, during the British period, all trusses were made of timber, structural timber. Structural timber is that timber which is capable of taking load and transferring the load without failure. There are common two types of trusses used in halls. There will be basic halls or fire halls or long halls in schools usually for the assembly of the students. Usually the roof will be laid, tile roof will be laid with purlins, longitudinal purlins. Purlins will be resting on trusses, few trusses starting from one end to the other, equally spaced trusses. You will have the walls on either side, they are called the gable end. The end walls of the hall which is a triangular in shape is called the gable end. Usually after the gable end you have say around 20 meter. Then you have around uh, 3 or minimum 2. 3 or minimum 2 trusses made of timber. But the span will be less or up to 6 meters. Up to 6 meters. More than 6 meters, timber trusses cannot be employed. You may have to go for steel trusses. So here timber trusses too, familiar popular trusses were king post truss and queen post truss. King post truss and queen post truss. King post truss is used when the span is less. When the Span, the width of the hall is less. The width of the hall is called the span. Once I told you, span means center to center of the wall, the effective span. Inner face of the wall to the inner face of the wall is called the clear span. Outer face of the wall to the outer face of the wall is called the overall span. Whenever you just say, say span, it is the effective span, center to center distance of the wall. When the span is up to 5 meter, you go for king post truss, king post truss. When the span is more than 5 meter, up to say 6 or 7 meters, you will go for queen post truss, queen post truss. Truss, the king post and queen post truss will be almost a triangular in shape. There, the outer frame will be a triangle. If it is king post, you will have a vertical member joining the apex of the triangle or the crown of the triangle to the mid of the uh, base uh, timber, base timber. You have a base of the triangle which is timber, sides also timber, it is a triangular structure. The post, the vertical post joining the crown and the center of the base is called the king post. So that is one member. So 3 plus 4, one member. Then from there, two inclined members will go and join the sides. From there again a vertical. So that is a structure line of a king post truss. You have a outer triangle, from the vertex of the triangle to the mid of the base, you have the king post. From that point, there will be two inclined members joining the inclined, uh, inclined lines of the triangle or the members of the triangle.
from the m again a vertical will come it's just like an m repeated m suppose we want to have a repetition again that can be repeated it's usually one repetition is enough in the case of kill po kill post instead of this vertical post like that you will have a horizontal piece first you will have a horizontal piece joining the inclined from there you will have a two vertices an inclined or horizontal piece joining the two from there you will have the two posts they are the kill posts so in kill post the vertical member at the mid instead of that you have a horizontal member joining the outer inclined sides from there you have the vertical post so king post truss and queue post truss are structural timber framework facilitating a hall to take care of the tiled roof or sheets whatever we will continue tomorrow thank you god bless